credit to the moderator who really kept the debate bouncing along, um, uh, moving quickly, lots and lots of different questions, uh, not just about Brexit. On Brexit, Jeremy Corbyn uh, trying to get across the point uh, that as far as he was concerned, getting Brexit done, this slogan of Boris Johnson, is not going to finish uh, at the end of January uh, 2020. It's going to be seven years of negotiations, uh, says Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, Boris Johnson refuting that, saying, no, the, the deal is done. It's a simply a matter of signing off on it. But the debate was much wider than that. There was issues of security and law and order. There was uh, the issue of anti-Semitism, which came up. Um, I have to say that the, one, at one particular moment, uh, when Boris Johnson was talking about anti-Semitism, he, he turned it around and brought Brexit back in, which didn't seem to be uh, didn't seem to the right tone, the right time uh, in order to do that. But you can see how relentlessly the Conservatives are pressing Brexit as almost their single issue in this election, and how, di how much difficulty Labour has had, to be honest, in the, in the past month in broadening it out and bringing in things like the NHS, uh, law and order, and other issues into the debate. As you say, Paul, uh, the, the strategy of Boris Johnson is to keep this election focused on Brexit. For Labour, the opposition, it's really about broadening it out to public services, the NHS, law and order, as you say, education. But what is the main issue in voters' minds as they go to the polls a week from now? Is, it, is this really the Brexit election? I think one of the problems that this election presents uh, for both voters and for politicians is the fact that there isn't really a single issue that dominates the agenda. Yes, Brexit is a big issue, but it's not the only issue. Trust, you can equally say, is, a, is one of the biggest issues in this election, and the fact that there is a lack of trust by the electorate for politicians of all sides. Now, the slogan is at the end, uh, Jeremy Corbyn saying, look, vote, uh, choose hope, vote real change. Boris Johnson saying, let's get it done. That's basically it. That's the last time these two men will be in the same room together until after the election. All right, thank you very much. From Maidstone, just outside London, Paul Brennan. Teenage activist Greta Thunberg has joined other young activists at a mass protest in Spain's capital where the UN's climate change conference is being held. The 16-year-old who's become the global face of public anger over environmental destruction was mobbed by media and supporters. Further demonstrations are planned in cities worldwide as young people demand urgent action from world leaders at the summit. Greta arrived in Madrid after sailing from the United States and then taking a train from Lisbon. Well, many people around the world are already trying to do things a bit differently to reduce their impact on the environment, even when others around them are not. This year, Mariama Kamo from New Zealand began what became a public journey towards zero waste. It's a fairly natural thing, for, I think, for most indigenous peoples to, um, to care about their footprint and the way that we um, engage with the payal, the environment, and how we respect that. We did practice pretty close to zero waste um, values growing up, but I didn't ever think of it that way until um, the beginning of this year when I decided that I'll try this thing zero waste for one month. And I thought, oh, actually, I'll share this with others. So I called it hashtag the month of Jan. <laughs> so I was really focused on it being one month. Like, maybe one month I'll try this thing out. And, um, and then I really struggled for about, uh, I, I mean, I, I think I probably failed immediately because as it turns out you can't really decide to go zero waste. You have to undo so much of what you've learned. I've discovered how much we believe that we need stuff that we actually don't need. So I had to undo a whole lot of beliefs and a whole lot of practices and one of those things was discovering that I didn't need cleaning products. I don't buy cleaning products at all anymore, just don't need them. And I was trying things like baking bread and making biscuits and because I didn't I'm a total sugar freak and I didn't want to be buying chocolate like I normally would. Find either a source of where we can find plastic or package free um, produce or grow it. So it's it's tricky. Focus for me, I guess, really is um, trying to keep the rubbish bin empty. This is some of the paraphernalia that I've collected for zero waste over this year. I don't have all of this with me all of the time. Um, I'll have usually two or three of these things, depending on what I think I'm going to need during the day. And if I strike something that I would like to buy but don't have the ability to um, to buy without having something like this, then I just don't buy it. We're not winning every day, but we're trying every day. And that's what I say to people who are interested in this journey is try every day. Do what you can in a bit more every single day. And 
at the end of the month, there was no question of whether I would keep going.